I mean, in total, you're earning from the farming side of your life, what, under 10 grand at the minute? Uh, they'll be under 10 grand. So times, times are hard. Yeah. Tight. It, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's a struggle, but it's, it's a way of life as well. General election coming up. How are you going to vote? That's for me to know. <laughs> I might not have decided yet. Really? It, uh, it's quite close in Westland and Lonsdale. It's easy to think of this election as essentially being a battle between David Cameron and Gordon Brown, which is happening in marginals in urban and suburban areas. But there's also another story happening in seats like this. This is Westmoreland and Lonsdale in the Lake District, a knife-edge Lib Dem Tory marginal held by the Lib Dems, but the Conservatives are really desperate to win it back. Now, the landscape here is beautiful, obviously, but underneath it, there's a whole tangle of issues. Let's start in the Cumbrian town of Kendal, uh, where I'm going to meet the sitting Lib Dem MP, Tim Farron. He's a really good example of how the Lib Dems try and hold on to seats like this. They really dig in bond with the local community and make themselves an immovable part of the furniture. So when the Tories want to get it back, they've really got to try and do the same. Uh, so Tim and the Tory candidate are really duking it out at the moment. And one of the things he's using against the Tories is what from the outside looks a bit like a strange kind of rural class war. Hello. Do you want a big one? For all the rage, you might as well. Thank you. Might as well be fashionable. Sounds like you vote for him, I guess, do you? Yeah. Why? Well, because he's done such a lot for us. What's he done for you? He's done our hospital. Right. He's, he's doing that. He's, he's done a, a thousand and one things. I can't mention them all, can I not? Have you seen the other fella? Is the Conservative come round, knocking on your door? Yeah. What did well, you I say? I not take any notice of him. I don't <laughs> know. I just said thank you very much. But I said, you can see you weren't voting for. Thank you very much. So we went. You vote. Or have you always voted Liberal Democrat? Yeah. yeah, I've always voted Conservative, but I don't come from this area. I come from Scarborough. Right. Yeah. The one thing I didn't see in Scarborough, which is what Tim does, is actually you go out and you see him around the town area. Right, right, right. And from a, a sort of um, local point of view, I think that's very good because mm. then it gives him a chance to meet everybody and everybody knows who he is. Right. I only Never knew ever. the name of the Conservative MP yesterday when I saw a poster. I what, MP know. or candidate? Candidate. Yeah. I didn't know. What's I his was. name? Come on, Can't put you on the spot. Now. Is it Gareth? Gareth, good. Yeah. And for your final five points? <laughs> no. No? <laughs> McKeever. I'm trying to get into class politics here at all, but if you look at... The Labour Party represents hardly any, hardly any of rural Britain, in all of rural right. England. And the difference between the Lib Dems and the Tories is we both represent big chunks of, of, of rural England. The difference between us and them is that I think we understand we have to earn the right to represent them. And I think we speak for the 95% of people he, here who are not terribly wealthy. And the Tories speak for the 5% who perhaps own most of what you can see around you. The squire or the peasant? Something like that. And actually, yes, it is idyllic, but the average income here is, you know, perhaps about one thirteenth the average house price. And so there is, there is real poverty here. It's the first time I've ever seen anybody with a camera or anybody listening to farmers in Oxford. Do you think politicians in London, where they are most of the time, listen <laughs> to people in your line of business? No, not at all. Absolutely not. I don't think they've got an idea about the countryside. I don't think they've got a connection to it either. I don't think they understand what it's really like. And what is it really like? It's hard work. They want to get out onto the, onto the farms, don't they, and, and uh, understand you know, how things are going, and it isn't going good at the moment for dairy farming. Do you ever wonder why you do it? I think, yes. Uh, ten years ago, no, I didn't, but now, yes, I do wonder why we do it, but I suppose it's because we love the countryside. Excuse me so, asking, how much do you think you're making a year at the minute? Not a lot. I won't say what. Well, less than 10,000. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Liberal, Democrat or Conservative? Conservative. Really? Yeah. Why do you vote Conservative? Um, I always have done. I think they work for the farmers as, as well as any of them. Lib them? Yeah. You will vote for the Liberal he's Democrats. The, he's the only one who wants to help the farmers, yeah. Right. You ever wonder why you do it? For the love of it. <laughs> <laughs> We're off to the Federation of Small Businesses hustings, which is the first all-candidate hustings of the general election campaign, but I think there's at least another eight to come. Well-known radical left-wing organisation, the Federation of Small Businesses. What makes you a Tory in, in the context of, of issues that come up in this constituency? In this constituency, we've got a lack of well-paid jobs. We've got one of the lowest average wages in the country, and yet we've got a stock of wealth that's very high, a lot of retired wealth. The average three bed semi costs over £200,000. The average wage at 17 means that many young people can't afford to stay here. 
uh, get on the housing ladder and actually make a life here. How do we unlock the economic potential of Westmead and Lonsdale? We do it in two ways. We get engineering jobs related to new nuclear. We're going to have that on the West Coast. Let's get those jobs into Kendall. Secondly, high-speed broadband. I think high-speed broadband for our rural areas in this country should be a right. It should be something that we have so that we can compete and live work um, at home, work from a converted barn, knowledge economy jobs. That will only come when we've got proper connectivity because we need businesses here to be able to compete on an equal footing with a business in Manchester, Birmingham, London or any other conurbation. I don't define myself in relation to Tim Farron. I'm Gareth McKeever and I've got a vision to bring well-paid jobs here to get our hospital back in its feet. So well, he might. That's his prerogative. But I'm going to be, if I get elected, um, on the benches with Conservative MPs. And if we have a Conservative government, and I've got the ear of that government as one of their MPs, I would argue that I'm going to be in a position to get things done. When I come to a part of the world like this, what I hear from farmers and small businessmen is all about the overweening power of the big supermarkets and how much they have food producers in particular. Of policy terms that are in your election manifestos, what you've got in your armoury to address that problem. The reality is we've talked about I mean, farming and the price people get for their produce, uh, and particularly in the livestock and dairy sectors, is absolutely criminal. Absolutely criminal. You talked before about the, your idea, of, I've talked about squires and peasants, and that was my phrase. But it was your phrase. The <laughs> idea that uh, the Conservatives might represent the rural few and the Liberal Democrats represent the rural many. Yeah. Does that include farmers, the rural many? Oh, definitely, yeah. We see, I think, in urban Britain, people see the countryside as is beautiful, idyllic. They don't see how hard it is to make a living here, incredibly hard to make a living here. It's about being a referee and the state yeah, yeah, being a referee, a fair referee, to make sure that people get a fair price for their product. You have an imbalanced market. You've got a handful of massively powerful retailers, also a handful of massively powerful processors that you never hear of. So they're the people who are, if you like, buying the product from the producers. And you have thousands and thousands and thousands of small farmers who are easily picked off. So you have to do something to make sure that the market is fair. No market is genuinely free unless it's fair. And that, that's the difference between a, a, a social liberal, tough liberal Democrat understanding of economics and the kind of free market Tory it's a tough call, economy. though. It is a tough call, isn't it? You have to start making the case for people who live in very large farms in idyllic locations yeah. as part of yeah. the problem of inequality in Britain. It's a sticky wicket, isn't it? Well, it's harder, but, I mean, poverty comes in different shapes and sizes. I mean, I, I first... I first joined the Liberals in the mid 80s. I've been watching um, Cathy Come Home, a rerun of Cathy Come Home, and sort of seeing that kind of the, un the avoidable misery of poverty and, and homelessness. And, and, I, and I see little traces of that in this part of the world as well. It's not, it's not the back streets, it's not your kind of taste of honey type poverty, but it's different sorts of poverty and it's very, very real. And if you've got a family of, you know, five in a what in what, in a two bedroom upstairs flat over a shop in Ambleside, because there's no council houses because the flaming Tories sold them all off. If that's just as important, just as appalling. Do you think that's ignored? In, I think, the, in a haze of William Wordsworth yeah, and, and, and rambling probably. and all the rest of it, we lose sight of the fact that yeah. there is poverty. I, I'm, I'm sure there is, I'm sure it's lost, which is why it's important. And if you're on five grand a year as a hill yeah. farmer, you're poor. Yeah, absolutely you are. And, why, and that's why it's important that you have a progressive representing you, not someone who supports the status quo.